welcome to Special Stage where we're at the tour of Epping for the first round of the REIS Asphalt Rally Championship. Damien Cole is here to try and make it six championships in a row, but he's going to have plenty of competition. Let's have a look at today's lineup. Plenty of crews capable and ready to try and knock Cole from that top spot. Regulars Stephen Simpson and Alex Laffey back again and in the same cars. John Indry makes the switch back to the familiar Darien this season, while for Simon Major it's changed to four-wheel drive at the wheel of the Millington powered Metro. The championship this year only features six rounds. The loss of a couple of events means a shorter but potentially more competitive season. With the drivers scoring their best five out of six, meaning there isn't much room for error and reliability as well as consistency will be key. So that's what we've got to expect today, but it's very, very wet at the moment. So let's head over to the stages for all of the action. Two stages for crews in the first loop and a chance to test the conditions. Despite feeling under the weather, Simon Major and Jonathan Hawkins would make an ideal start to the event, leading the way by just three seconds at the end of stage two. Bit of a different car to what we're used to seeing you out in. How's it gone so far? Yeah, you'll have to excuse me. I'm not very well. I've lost my voice. But, um, and I am bloody knackered. <laughs> it's a quick car, but it's really, really hard to drive on long stage. So I think I'm going to have to get a lot fitter if I'm going to drive this. But it went reasonably well. We're a bit cautious, obviously. Um, yeah, the setup is not quite right for this sort of rally, but you know, the traction is really good on it. And uh, with past Simo there in the stage, I think he's had a problem. So we're not setting the world light, but we just want to try to get some experience in the car, really, and learn from it. Sadly, we lose Stephen Simpson and Patrick Walsh early in the stage as they get stuck in one of the chicanes. Damien Cole enlists the help of Jack Morton this season. A steady but good start to light in second. A few moments along the way in the wet stages, but no major problems. 70, left two Titans don't cut. And right two don't cut opens. 200. Flat left and flat right. Into flat left over crest, 70. Left two don't cut over crest, Titans. And flat crest, 100. Flat crest, 120. Flat left and flat left over crest, 100. Flat left over crest, into crest. Right two, Titans three over crest. Left three, Titans, 50. Turn, right four, don't cut. Left eight, don't cut, rocks. 70. Flat crest, right one, Titans cut at sign. 300. How are those first two stages for you, Damien? Oh, it's nasty when it's slippery. <laughs> we had a few moments, a bit of sliding around, but um, I think we went OK. Positive start for the season campaign? Yep, back into the tarmac. Feels nicer than the first two stages of the Y Dean did anyway. Rob Swan and Darren Garrett have a small moment going onto the grass in one of the chicanes, but they end this loop third and happy to take it easy until they found the grip levels. Those first two stages for you? Yeah, very slippery. Yeah, first stage we came to the first chicane um, and went off the road onto the field because the chicane was so tight we couldn't get through. But yeah, we just, to be honest, taking it easy. Yeah. Simon Chapman and Will Rutherford were another crew just happy to try and find the breaking points and grip levels. How is that for you, Simon? Fantastic. Had a had a great run through there. Um, had a bit of a problem on stage one. We came across Roger Moran fairly quickly. And unfortunately, uh, he didn't let us pass till the beginning of the Burma Road. But uh, once we got past, that was OK. Uh, got caught out by uh, a sh chicane a little bit. But um, yeah, the pretty uneventful run through there. It's obviously quite slippy, just trying to find your braking points, really. But uh, the car's great. It's great to be back out again. Tim Wilson and Elgin Davis weren't having as much fun. Slippery and horrible conditions to get through. But they couldn't complain too much with fifth place for now. Just for you. Guess what? Very slippy. Horrible. But never mind. That's why we're here. It'll be bright this afternoon, I'm sure. David Hardy and John McCulloch would be surprising themselves with the pace, 
when they look to the times that is. They take a steady approach and end this loop in six. How are those stages for you? Well, it'd be the same as for everybody else, just a bit a bit slippy and a bit wet, so we'll just take it easy. Um, so no, just the same, same for everybody, I think. Roger Hicks and Ian Taylor were having brake problems again in the same place as last year, but despite that, they were going well. Seventh place and leading the B12 class. Um, it was going pretty good until we lost the brakes in exactly the same place as where we lost them last year. So I don't know what the issue is because they're all new. It's all new fluid and I don't know. I have to go back to service now and get the boys to check it out. Hopefully it won't happen again, hey? Hopefully. It cost us a front end last year. So. Part of that reason for the lead in the B12 class was problems with John Indry. An overshoot on stage one damaging the car and causing them to drop down to 21st overall. We filmed the front of my car, yeah, well, it wasn't too bad for us. We put all the right tyres on, but my mistake, Pete called it, and I thought we were going round the triangle, so we'd gone straight on at the end of the first stage. And we missed the hay bale, but sadly we've gone over a concrete culvert like that, so fortunately we're only 500 yards from the stage, so we drove with a rear puncture, and um, the car's vibrating, but whatever. Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson would be looking for a finish here this weekend after too many non-finishes. You all right? How is that for a start for you? Yeah, it was all right. We set off quite cautious because it's a bit wet. We'd have stolen one of the chicanes, but other than that, we're just trying to get a finish today, to be honest with you. We're, we've had too many DNFs, so we're just trying to get a good finish if we can. But we had a good rhythm going in there. It's, it's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be, to be fair. There's a bit of muck on the road here and there, and... I see Simo stopped in there, so I don't know what's going on there, but we'll keep going and keep, we'll survive. We'll see you later then. I will not be beat by this sport. I will not be beat. <laughs> Adrian Spencer and Paul Williams would be getting their mistakes out of the way early, hitting the very first chicane in the stage, luckily not losing much time and not damaging the car too much. Okay. Well, the grip just seems to change different places. Hit the bale on the first chicane because it seemed it was breaking, and all of a sudden just nothing, and straight into the bale. But not too worried. I don't think I lost too much time there, but it, it's 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 fun. And rounding out the top ten at this stage would be Graham Coffee and Ali Davies. Problems in a few chicanes themselves, costing the pair some time. Hi there. How are those stages for you? Uh, we I messed up on two chicanes, so they were a lot tighter than I expected. Uh, so we ended up doing two reverses, but other than that, they were, they were all right. They were not bad for the first two stages of the day. An accident in the stage means a brief stoppage and some nominal times. But for those who completed the stages, here's a reminder of that top ten after stage two. Two more stages in this loop, a repeat of this morning's stages, and the weather wasn't getting any better. The stages and the weather may not have changed, but the lead has, as Damien Cole and Jack Morton changed that three-second deficit into a two-second advantage at the end of stage four. Long crest into very long left three at Armbow Titans, and crest into right one, left two, and right one into open right four, don't cut and left three flat right over crest 100 crest into right one and flat left cut over crest 100 down right two through dip 70 left two 50 over flying finish crest and left one well out well out that unfortunately means a drop down to second for Simon Major and Jonathan Hawkins. Their advantage over the rest of the field was over a minute and a half now. So it was looking like a two-way fight for the win. Rob Swan and Darren Garrett continue their good run to lie in third. They may be slightly off the pace of the leaders, but the battle for that podium place would be a close one. <laughs> Unfortunately, we lose Simon Chapman and Will Rutherford when they end up on a bank damaging the gearbox trying to get the car back on the road again. 
The loss of Chapman means places gain behind, so it's a move to fourth for Tim Wilson and Elgin Davies, just eight seconds behind Swan. David Hardy and John McCulloch continued their good run to lie in fifth. The pair lies second in the B13 class behind Major. Problems behind them now is a chance to build on the pace for Roger Hicks and Ian Taylor. They remain in the lead of the B12 class in sixth overall now. Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson's plan of survival was still going well. No change as they gain that place due to retirements above, lying seventh at the end of stage four. Adrian Spencer and Paul Williams avoid any drama this time through. No advance of the results though as they remain third in the B13 fight and eighth overall. There would be a move the right way up the results for Ian Kevin and Phil Williams. They move up into ninth overall and second in the B12 class. And John Indry and Peter James would also get back on the pace after their earlier incident, just moving in to round out the top 10 now and take third in the B12 class. A few of the classes outside the top 10, and it would be 12th overall for Richard Merriman and Kath Cousin in the Darien, giving the pair the B11 class lead. A lead of 30 seconds they would have over Josh Payton and Marcus Mizzen. The pair having a bit of a misfire in the morning stages, but still going well, second in the B11 class. And rounding out the top of the B11 class in 26th overall was Steve Quigley and Ian Meakin, just over a minute back from Payton. There wouldn't be a big Group N entry this weekend, but the couple that were here were in a close fight. David and Matthew White coming out in the lead of that at this stage, just seven seconds advantage. Their small advantage over Wynne Watkins and Sharon Roberts, second in the class and fighting for that overall and class position, going into the middle loop of the day. Gus Greensmith and Michael Gilby join the championship as a warm-up for Circuit of Ireland. They make a great start to the event with the lead in the B10 class. Greensmith would have a small 11 second lead in that class over Graham Muter and Steve Hallmark in the escort. And it would be third in that class for Paul Clapham and Colin Watson, seven seconds behind the escort ahead, something which could have been different had it not been for a spin on the opening stage of the day. David Earthy and Maria Rayner wouldn't have to worry too much about the class lead, being the only ones in the A6 class. Their concentration this weekend was on the overall results. In the B9 class, it would be the lead for Lloyd Morgan and Mark Clapworthy in their micro. An overall time they actually share with Earthy in the C2. There would be 31 seconds difference in that B9 class, with David Morgan and Richard Suter in the Darien coming out of stage four, second in class. And rounding out that class in 37th overall were Ian Barnard and Richard Bonner. Losing the clutch in stage four, not helping their overall times. Just the one car in class 15, so it's the lead for Tim Daltrey and David Millard in 39th overall. Sadly, we lose Mark Borthwick and Phil Boyle. They get caught up by the conditions in stage three and go off the road, caught here by one of our viewers. And we would lose Mark Jones and Terry Martin, the throttle cable snapping on the BMW, but a case of man flu was also a factor in the decision to call it a day. So with four stages down, the results look like this. Damien Cole takes a small lead back from Major, but with many miles to go, it was far from over. Single stages in the remainder of the loops. This morning's stages joined into one. No change in this stage for Damien Cole and Jack Morton. They actually managed to extend their lead to nine seconds now, even with the conditions giving the pair a few scares. 
and flat left into dip, and flat jump, 70, long left one, and turn a right nine boom cut. And turn flat left cut, remember, 200. Long flat left over crest, 170. Flat jump, 150. Left one, taking four for your arm core. And right one opens, 70. Right three, remember it's slippy last time, 120. Long left one, and left two. Slippy again, 50. Left four minus, immediate right nine on bales. 70. Flat right, doing good, double crest, 70. Yeah, a lot of standing water in there now. It's very, very treacherous in places. The, the finish line, we're having a, an uphill sixth gear drift over the finish line, which is interesting. And you've got a bit of competition today, haven't you? Yes. Simon's not far behind. Simon's going very, very well. There was two seconds in it before that stage. Do you think you can keep him just behind you? Well, we'll try our best. Now, he, now he's turned to the dark side and gone all four-wheel drive on us. Cole wouldn't be the only one almost being caught out. Simon Major and Jonathan Hawkins have a near miss themselves, but they get away with it to continue to lie second overall. You're giving Mr Cole a run for his money today. Yeah, uh, keep him honest at least. Uh, we had a big moment in that stage there. We went out with uh, a cut slick on the back and there was too much standing water, so we had a big aquaplane in moment before the bridge there and somehow managed to get it back on the road, but I think the time was lost there to Damien. I think he took about seven out of us that time. Yeah, you know, still a long way to go, and uh, like I say, hopefully we'll get a tyre choice right for the next couple of loops. And... Unfortunately, we lose Rob Swan and Darren Garrard in stage five when they go off the road. And that means the gap to the lead gets much bigger. But that wouldn't matter to Roger Hicks and Ian Taylor as they are the ones to move up the results to take the final step of the podium at this stage. <laughs> it's still steamed up. Yes, I know. I've been doing this all through the stage. How was that for you? Yeah, really good. Yeah. Oh, and I was stalled it just for you. <laughs> No, you don't mind the wet too much? No, I think we're going to need to change the back tyres for the next one, I think. But um, they're all right, don't get me wrong. But um, um, no, everything seems to be working fine. Yeah, good. David Hardy and John McCulloch were still enjoying the stages. Still going well and surprised at the results. Fourth overall and second in the B13 class. Are you still enjoying it? I am, yeah, yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. Very surprised where we are, but enjoying it. Good. Tim Wilson and Elgin Davies continue at their steady pace, unhappy with the tight chicanes though as they were causing damage to the car on the way through. Still very wet out there, we've lost a lot of teams, how are you finding it? Uh, fine, <laughs> it's a bit slippy to say the least. Uh, the chicanes are far too tight, they just damage cars, I know they're there to keep the speeds down but um, it's far too tight, just damaged my car again for no good reason. A few setup changes to the diffs would help a little for Adrian Spencer and Paul Williams. They continue to round out the top of the B13 class, sixth overall. It's not drying up, is it? No, they promised the sunshine this afternoon and I even brought my sunglasses, but it doesn't look like we're going to get that at all. I think this is it for today now, so... At least it makes tyre choice easy, that's the main thing, but uh, had a better run. You know, made some diff changes and the uh, car seems to be going a bit better now, so as long as I keep it on the black stuff, that's the main thing. John Indry and Peter James continue their fight back of the results. Seventh place now and putting in some good times. But a change of tyres would be needed in this next stage. <laughs> Is it a bit better for you this afternoon? It was getting better, yes. I'm trying to get neutral, which is playing up. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was better, but uh, this is what happens when you rally on a budget. We left the intermediates on the rear. We knew they looked a bit suspect, and they don't work. We're aiming to get back up to 
sort of fourth or fifth third if we're really lucky which I think we were about 25th after the first loop so um, you know when you see the in car and the culvert we went over it's amazing we're still here so I could do with the sun coming out though if I'm honest. See you later. Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson lose a little time on this stage. A stall on the start line would be the cause of that. Eighth place for now. <laughs> How was that for you? All right yeah we uh, stall on the start for some reason I don't know why but all right, yeah, we're getting to a bit smoother, you know, it's getting a bit used to it now because we haven't done a lot of rallying in the wet, or, no, so it takes a bit of confidence, you know, just keeping it flat over them crests and but it's good, yeah, enjoying it really, yeah. And it's a slip down the results too for Ian Kenvin and Phil Williams. They dropped to ninth overall and third in the B12 class with a big spin midway through the stage. <laughs> Uh, we had a big spin on, on our stage, uh, coming down to the uh, bottom of Four Ways Bridge. So um, we got a bit stuck in the mud, we did, so we got out of it. So we lost a bit of time on our one, but keep going. A bad start for Bob Fowden and Ashley Trimble finally starts to improve. And they find themselves rounding out the top ten now, but still with some changes to be made. Still quite a lot of standing water out there, isn't there? Uh, yeah, we need to cut the tyres a bit more. Uh, on the front, we cut the back ones because we were getting a problem getting traction, but I, there's so much standing water, it's just aquaplaning in places. Not having a very good run today, but uh, we're still here. A lot of people are off, I think, you know. But there we are, that's the way it goes, isn't it? No change for Richard Merriman and Kath Curzon as they lead the way in the B11 class in the Darien. Still not happy with the tyre choice at this stage. It's still very, very wet. We had a lot of aquaplaning in our stage. We're still on intermediates on the back, and I think perhaps it's time for full wets. So uh, we'll see how it goes from here on. Go for full wets and hope the sun doesn't make a late appearance. It don't look late, does it? <laughs> Josh Payton and Marcus Mizzen saw the misfire from this morning and continue to lie second in the B11 class, just 12 seconds behind Merriman. It's still very wet. Yeah, it's just wet. I, um, I'm quite enjoying it now. We've got all the steaming out the window and the mist fire sorted, so just out enjoying it now. Sliding the rain, loving it. Make sure you get to the end. Hopefully. Unfortunately, we lose Steve Quigley and Ian Meakin. Ooh. They get caught out by the conditions and crash out on stage five, caught here by one of our viewers. One man's loss is another's gain, and Martin Hodgson and Tony Jones step up to take that third place in the B11 class, enjoying the stages despite the conditions. Oh, Are you enjoying it though? Always enjoying it, yes, very much so. But uh, it's getting drier now, it's getting more grip, a little bit faster for this afternoon. No changes for Gus Greensmith and Michael Gilby in the lead of the B10 class. A bit of cosmetic damage to the mirrors was about all they had to report. Today? Uh, it's been good. Uh, the conditions in the morning were quite slippy, so um, we struggled a little bit, but um, I think we're, we're beginning to pull a lead in the class now, so we're just trundling away trying to get some mileage under our belt. And you've had a bit of a something here? It's not a proper rally if you haven't lost a wing mirror, so. <laughs> Paul Clapham and Colin Watson have a clear run without a repeat of the stage one spin and move up to take second in the B10 class now. Quick. So it's been very wet today, how have you found it? Uh, difficult this morning, yeah, we had problems with the windscreen, not demisting and things like that, same as everybody really, but now it's drying out, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get a bit quicker this afternoon. Best of luck for the last few stages. Smashing. thank you. Which of course means that for Graham Muter and Steve Hallmark, it would be a place down in the class to lie third in the B10 class at the end of stage five. David Earthy and Maria Rayner of course continue to lead the way in the A6 class, they move into 25th overall too. So far? Yeah, good. Uh, very slippery. Um, first time over here in the wet, so very cautious, but enjoying it. Sadly, we lose our B9 class leaders, Lloyd Morgan and Mark Clapworthy in Stage 5. Which means that for David Morgan and Richard Souter in the Darien, it would be a move into the B9 class lead at this stage. Ian Barnard and Richard Bonner also benefit from the loss of Lloyd ahead and move into second in the class in the Nova. 
how's it been going for you today? Uh, not too bad. We had a couple of issues on stage four. We lost the clutch over at the limp through, but yeah, it's going all right. The uh, conditions are a bit same for everybody, aren't they? A bit slippery. Does it bother you when it's wet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you just got to drive to the conditions, and I think we're getting better in the wet. Um, yeah, we're enjoying it. And that means that we see Stephen Brown and Paul Stringer move into third in the class. A new car for the season and it was going well for the pair. No change for Tim Daltrey and David Millard in class 15. The only crew there, they lie 33rd overall. Unfortunately we lose Mark Jasper and Don Wyatt. The throttle cable breaking in stage 5. And we would also lose Richard Felgate and Mark Mason when the suspension top mount breaks on the BMW and they are forced to crawl back through the stages to retirement. You're not supposed to be down here. <laughs> no, a bit of a disaster in there, about a third of the way through. It felt like we got a puncture or a wheel loose, stopped, we hadn't. Um, then it got progressively worse, we stopped again and we've just driven the whole stage at about 30 mile an hour just to try and get to the end and see if we can work out what's wrong. So at the end of stage five, it's still the lead for Damien Cole, but with Simon Major keeping him in his sights. Stage six would be the first big change in the stage, a reverse run of this morning's stages. Despite the reverse stage providing a new challenge, the times at the top wouldn't change. Damien Cole and Jack Morton continue to hold their lead of nine seconds going into the final stage. Let me break in 70 by three. Left three. Jump into flat right double crest. 120. Crest immediate long flat left. 70. Keep right. Over flat jump over finish. 100. A few. Which means for Simon Major and Jonathan Hawkins, it was looking like they could be as close as they were going to get. No time lost or gained in this stage to remain second. John Indry and Peter James set themselves a top five target and they go even better. They reach the end of stage six in third place and leading the class. It would be a great run for Adrian Spencer and Paul Williams. The B13 class was always going to belong to Major this weekend, but second in the class and fourth overall was looking good. Sadly for Roger Hicks and Ian Taylor, stage six would be a bit of a messy stage. They lose a bit of time, which unfortunately drops them to fifth overall and second in the B12 class. David Hardy and John McCulloch continue their eventful run to lie in sixth overall and third in the B13 class still. Tim Wilson and Elgin Davis continue to battle through the chicanes, probably mindful that they were now going the other way and not to damage the other side. They lie in seventh place for now. Bob Fowden and Ashley Trimble continue to feature in the top 10 now that they were getting the setup on the car how they wanted. They lie in 8th place for now. 9th place now for Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson, unable to gain back the time from that stall just yet. Our B11 class leaders Richard Merriman and Kath Curzon remain in the lead of the class and also move up to round out the top 10 overall now. There wasn't much change in that class with Josh Payton and Marcus Mizzen continuing to lie second in the class at this stage. And Martin Hodgson and Tony Jones keep hold of their newfound third place in the B11 class with a good gap either side of them. Ian Kenvin and Phil Williams' time still suffer from that earlier spin. 
but they still hold a respectable 11th overall and third in the B12 class. The Group N battle was getting a little more spread out. No change for the lead though as David and Matthew White look good for their first win of the season. It wasn't over yet with Wynne Watkins and Shireen Roberts remaining second, but the gap was now 34 seconds. So it would take a mistake from the leaders to change that. No change for Gus Greensmith and Michael Gilby. They continue their dominance in the B10 class. second in that class was only 14 seconds to this pair, Paul Clapham and Colin Watson, and with one stage to go, anything was possible. Graham Muter and Steve Hallmark lie third in that class, and with themselves only five seconds behind Clapham, it was looking like a very close battle this weekend. No change for David Earthy and Maria Rayner, they of course remain in command of the A6 class, and no change overall in 25th either. David Morgan and Richard Suter keep hold of their B9 class lead, which was up to over a minute at this stage. Ian Barnard and Richard Bonner would remain second in the class, ready to take advantage if there were any problems ahead, although unlikely at this stage. And Stephen Brown and Paul Stringer still round out the top of that class, third B9 and 39th overall. And for Tim Daltrey and David Millard, it would of course be that class 15 lead, lying in 33rd overall. So with just one more stage remaining, the results look like this. Close times through the leaderboard means that nothing will be decided until the end of the final stage. Stage seven, the final stage and a repeat of the previous. A look then at the overall results and it would be a finish for Ian and Mags Kelly, making it 10 finishes from 10 starts for the crew. A steady weekend here at round one, season take fourth in the B9 class. They would be a few places behind this pair, Stephen Brown and Paul Stringer, gaining experience in the car as the day went on and ending with a third in class finish. With a new car in the works but not quite complete, it would be an underpowered run this weekend for Chris Rice and Craig Cameron. They have a few more weeks to try and get the new car sorted for the Manx and get back into the B13 battle. Fortunately, we do see Kev Monaghan and Chris Purvis reach the finish of the event, not something that the pair have been lucky enough to do recently. Intercom problems wouldn't help the times, but the weekend was about getting used to the new car on stages like these, and the pace would come as the season goes on. Tim Daltrey and David Millard have a good clean run to take the class 15 win and 31st overall. No change for Ian Barnard and Richard Bonner, they have a better run in the afternoon stages to take 29th overall and second in the B9 class. Unfortunately, we will lose Graham Muter and Steve Hallmark from the B10 class battle in stage 7. Which means it's a last minute step up to third in that class for Tim Sipple and Matthew Smalley in the MG. No change for the B9 class leaders, David Morgan and Richard Suter. They have a problem free run through the final stages to take that class win. David Earthy and Maria Rayner have a good clean run this weekend as they come away with 23rd overall and of course take the A6 class win. 
No change for Paul Clapham and Colin Watson. They don't make any advance on the class lead, but they do hold on to their second place in the B10 class. A steady and clean run sees Martin Hodgson and Tony Jones reach the finish with 20th overall and of course third in the B11. A great result here at round one for Gus Greensmith and Michael Gilby sees them finish in 19th overall and take the B10 class win which they had held all day. Wynne Watkins and Shireen Roberts enjoy an event long battle for the Group N trophy. Sadly for them second place will have to do for this weekend. Which of course means it's the group end win for David and Matthew White. A good start to the season for the pair. <laughs> so congratulations, you've taken the win today and it's been pretty tricky, hasn't it really? Yeah, it's been uh, mixed conditions. Um, wet this morning, which suited our car. It dried out, we made a wrong tyre choice uh, towards the end, but then we went back onto uh, the right tyres for the last stage and uh, it's all come good, yeah, 15th overall and 13th class. And of course this is only the first round, so there's still so much more to come. Have you got good expectations for the season? Yeah, we're doing the full championship this year, we're looking forward to it. We've not been to Allen before, uh, we've not done the Allen Manx, which has been a dream for a long number of years. Um, really looking forward to that, so yeah, it's a good start, really pleased. Ian Kenvin and Phil Williams had a good weekend overall, not finishing quite as high as they had been, but 12th overall and 3rd in the B12 class was a good start to the season. Josh Painton and Marcus Mizzen had come from a bit of a problematic start and worked their way through it to take 11th overall and 2nd in the B11 class. Confidence after a crash at the end of last season meant a steady start for Alex Laffey and Andrew Roughhead but they managed to get back on the pace towards the end of the event and move up to round out the top 10 at the end of the day. Flat right of a crest, 60. Rightish of a flat crest, 40. Flat crest, 40. Rightish of a flat crest, jump 100. Flat crest into left six, 60. Slowing right four in and left four. Keep in of a crest into right six of a crest long. Keep it on. Right of a 80 crest into left six long. Continues of a 100. Flat right of a flat crest jump 100. Unfortunately, we lose Simon Bowen and Richard Robinson. Their hopes of beating that non-finish curse ended when they crashed out on stage seven. It's a great result this weekend for Richard Merriman and Kath Curzon. They take advantage of the drying conditions to end the event ninth overall and first in the B11 class. Tim Wilson and Elgin Davies avoid any more damage to the car in the chicanes to take 8th overall in the Impacto. David Hardy and John McCulloch don't quite manage to hold on to their earlier 4th overall. This weekend it would be 7th and 4th in the B13 class. Roger Hicks and Ian Taylor were another team to miss out on their earlier pace but a great finish nonetheless in 6th overall and 2nd in the B12 class. Bob Fowden and Ashley Trimble managed to move the right way up the results in the later part of the event. They end the day 5th overall and 3rd in the B13 class. And second in that class with a great fourth overall finish were Adrian Spencer and Paul Williams. A problem free run for the pair was a great way to start the new season. John Indry and Peter James would have hoped to be a bit closer to the battle for the lead at the start of the day. But given the problems, they would of course be happy with third overall and the B12 and Millington rear wheel drive win here at round one. But the real story would be at the front. And with nine seconds advantage going into the final stage, Damien Cole and Jack Morton must have thought the win was as good as theirs. But unfortunately for the pair, that wasn't to be. 
They reached the end of the event in second place, losing out by just a single second. Crest into flat left, 70, slipping break in by three. Left three, jump into flat right over crest, 120. Crest immediate long flat left, 70. Keep right over flat jump, finish 100. Well done. Which means that for Simon Major and Jonathan Hawkins, it would be the win. The pair just as surprised as anyone to hear the news at the finish. The pace wasn't in question, but with nine seconds in it on the final stage, they too must have felt that second place would be where it would finish. So before we chat to Simon at the finish, here's a reminder of the results. Major's last minute push on the final stage means that once again the Tour of Epin finishes with just one second in it. So Simon, it's been a pretty hard fought battle and you're also in a bit of shock as well, I think. I, am. I mean, we went into that last stage nine seconds behind. We said, come on, let's throw caution to <laughs> it. We put some slicks on there. Um, I must say, we had the best stage I've ever had over Epin, but it was right on the limit there. I knew we took time out, Damien, but I didn't know we won it. And apparently, I just said it'd be one by one second, so absolutely over me with that. <laughs> and of course, you've changed cars this year. You've not yes. really, this is your first proper event out, isn't it, with this one? It is. I, I have to say, you know, hats off and full credit to Dennis Marshall and his guys. It's their car. They've, they've worked so hard to get this car here. It's first ever national rally they've done, and they've done such a great job. I think we've still got a few uh, you know, jobs with the car, and uh, it's by all means not perfect yet, but it's not bad. <laughs> and they've done a great job, and I've, thanks to everyone who's out, all the partners and everything like that, and all my guys as well today have been running a couple of other cars, so thanks to them. And of course, you've got a taste for victory now. Do you think you can be the one to knock Damien off his winning streak? I did tell you earlier he's beatable, didn't I? And I never give up, ever. And uh, I have to say big thanks to John as well. He's been absolutely fantastic. He's one of the only few co-drivers that's ever actually pushed me on in a stage. And I think he must have a death wish or something, the boy. But fair play to him. He's done really well. So thanks to him as well. Thanks to everyone and thanks to Mel as well, my girlfriend. She's been fantastic this week because uh, we've both been ill and uh, we've been working so hard this year. And uh, yeah, I couldn't do it without her either. So thanks to her. Well, congratulations. Thanks very much. Damien, it's been a close battle all day with you and Simon and he just clinched you there in the last stage. Was there anything particular that happened? Yeah, I think we, we uh, went on a tyre that was maybe a bit too soft. We went on to slicks, but I think we should have maybe had a harder one. We had quite a bit of understeer through the start of the stage. Uh, but in fairness to Simon, he drove very, very well. I won the rally by one second last year and lost it by one second this year. So. Yeah, I have to say, like, one second, it's not a lot really, is it? No, we were both a long, long way in front of, I think it was three or four minutes in front of anybody else. Um, so we've, we've both gone very hard all day. Um, I'd say congratulations to, to Simon. Uh, I think it's the first time he's won on Epind. You didn't have the best of starts to the day, but you actually never gave up. And you said you wanted to finish up Third. here. Uh, yeah, 96 after the first stage. 96 to third. Not quite as, well, I don't know, what's better, 33rd on the Cheviot to first. So, um, yeah, just had an awful, awful day. Everything going wrong. Um, but, you know, we hit a rock the same size as the Darien, so the fact that it's still here is amazing. Um, we, we tried a couple of bits on tyres at the end and um, just to see if we could get on the pace of these guys, and we, we made it wrong. I underestimated it's four degrees up there. You can't put medium slicks on this thing at four degrees, nothing happens. So um, we've had so many lurid slides and this, that and the other. So the fact that, you know, really we've only done that damage to it and that front bumper was cheesing me off anyway because it was all damaged. So it's about time we put a new one on. So um, well done to Simon and Dennis Marshall who does this car. He lives just up the road from me. Um, you know, that is phenomenal. That, we followed it off the line on that last stage and it's, um, it's, uh, it's a quick little thing here. We... You know, I'd like to come back here in the dry and we'll give that a go. Um, and if we if we hadn't have done that, then maybe we might have been somewhere. But fair play to Simon, you've still got to drive it and that boy can drive. So, um, yeah, brilliant. So, um, and it might be, uh, yeah, we might even be better. So we're third at the moment and see what, see what happens. So after round one, the points look like this. 
Cole's defence has to take second place for now, but with round two on the Isle of Man coming up, Cole's experience could well be a big advantage. So that brings us to the end of round one of the Asphalt Rally Championship here on Epping. And in that final stage, Simon Major manages one final push to take the win from Damien Cole by just one second. And with times that close, could this be the year that Damien Cole finally loses his championship crown? Join us for round two on the Manx. <laughs> Five right to left in and six right continue to overtake. 